Hello everyone, welcome to OM Institute. I am Surendra Reddy, Faculty for Electrical Machines at OM Institute, Hyderabad. So in this session, I would like to discuss about the solutions for synchronous machines class test, which we conducted just two days before in our classroom. Actually, this session is ex exclusively for OM Institute students, those students who enrolled to OM Institute's offline as well as online courses. For both batches, we conducted this examination. But this particular session can also be used by other students who are preparing on their own. If you are preparing on your own self-preparation, then also you can treat these questions as reference, uh, you know, examination and you can practice, okay, from this particular session. So the test is on synchronous machines and uh, we all know that in order to succeed in any competitive examination, it is very important to attempt class examinations or class tests once the subject is completed. Even if you are preparing on your own, once your preparation is completed, you have to examine yourself how far you have been prepared, how much concepts have been cleared, in which areas you are, uh, you know, having uh, some uh, doubts or in which areas you are committing some mistakes. Everything you can understand by writing one examination, okay. So, in OM Institute, for every subject, we will conduct a class test, okay. For example, how the class test is going to be, I would like to discuss here, okay. So, this particular class test consists of 13 questions and the examination is for 20 marks, okay. There are around 7 2 marks questions consisting of 14 marks and there are 6 1 mark questions consisting of 6 marks, overall 20 marks examination. Okay, so every subject we will conduct the test because once the subject preparation is completed, uh, as I mentioned, writing an examination will give you some inputs, right? Okay, so in which area a student was performing well, in which concepts you are unable to solve the problem so that you can revise that concept again, so that next time you will not commit any mistakes like that. Okay, practice and then attempt one class examination. Okay, so. Uh, I am going to discuss the solutions for the class test on synchronous machines for GATE 2025 batch, okay, alright. So here we have the first question, uh, remember guys, before attempting this test, okay, suppose if you are a self-prepared student, if, if you are not from OM Institute, okay, but still you can use this video for your preparation, before attempting these questions uh, by yourself, uh, you have to first thoroughly prepare the subject first, okay. Uh, if you have already prepared, just revise your class notes once and then attempt this examination, okay, alright. So here we have the first question, this is a numerical answer type question, okay, and this is for one mark, okay. Uh, Let us read the problem. A synchronous motor connected to bus bar is drawing armature current at UPF, unity power factor. Its excitation EMF is double than bus bar voltage and synchronous reactance is 1 per unit, then what is the load angle? We have to answer up to 2 decimal places. Remember guys, whenever question is from electrical machine, any machine in fact, okay, the first duty is you have to understand whether the given question is from generator's topic or motor's topic, okay. Yes, it is very clear the question is from a synchronous motor, okay. And the motor is connected to infinite bus bar drawing armature current at unity power factor, actually it is uh, rated armature current guys, okay, rated armature current, the word is missing, it is drawing rated armature current at unity power factor, uh, so important observation is the machine is at unity power factor, hmm. it is also given excitation EMF is double than bus bar voltage, we know bus bar voltage is nothing but 1 per unit always. But it is given excitation EMF, that is nothing but EF, which is double than bus bar voltage, that is nothing but a 2 per unit, okay. So, synchronous reactance is 1 per unit, see guys, synchronous reactance was given, no information about resistance, so you can neglect resistance. So, synchronous reactance XS is equal to 1 per unit and RA is neglected, no information. So, what is the load angle is the question, okay. So, important information in the question is unity power factor. We all know that in synchronous machines, unity power factor means normal excitation, right? Yes, in a synchronous motor, leading power factor means over excitation, lagging power factor means under excitation, unity power factor means normal excitation. 
Yes, we know at unity power factor, which is a normal excitation. Normal excitation means EF cos delta value is equal to Vt, right? EF cos delta is equal to Vt. And in the given question, EF is 2 per unit and Vt is equal to 1 per unit. So from this, cos delta is equal to 1 by 2. Therefore, delta is equal to cos inverse 0.5, okay? Yes, what is cos inverse 0.5 is going to be 60 degrees. Therefore, load angle delta is equal to 60 degrees. Cos 60 is equal to 0 0.5. So, the answer is delta 60 degrees. Uh, that is a straightforward question, easy model, right? Okay. Okay. So, let us move to question number 2. This is a numerical answer type question. This is also a one mark question. Let us read the problem. A 1000 volt, 4 pole, 50 hertz, 3 phase synchronous motor drawing 50 ampere at 0.8 power factor lagging, what is the torque developed by the motor? Okay, We need to calculate the torque developed by the machine. Uh, it is a synchronous motor. All right. So, if it is a motor, it will draw electrical power as input. So, therefore, input power I can calculate which is root 3 VL IL cos 5. Understand? Okay, It is a three phase machine. You can also write one more formula, 3 V phase I phase cos phi, any formula we can use. So according to the given data, so the line voltage is 1000 volt and the line current is 50 ampere, yes or not, machine is drawing 50 ampere at 0.8 power factor, therefore cos phi is equal to 0.8. So if I use this formula, I will be able to calculate active power drawn by the motor. So let me use my calculator. Remember guys, this is practice test for gate exam, you know, gate patch students. So calculator is allowed, okay. So root 3 into 1000 into 50 into 0.8. So I am getting 69282.03 watt. This is the active power drawn by the motor. But we are asked to calculate what is the torque developed by the motor, okay. So, uh, what I can do, there is a relation between power, torque and speed. What is the relation? Yes, so power is equal to 2 pi nt by 60. From this, the torque is equal to power multiplied by 60 by 2 pi n, where n is nothing but ns, because we know synchronous motor will rotate at synchronous speed. So, just to substitute the data, yes, so what is the power we got? 69282. So, 69,282 into 60 divided by 2 pi ns. Can I say ns is a synchronous speed and how to calculate synchronous speed? Yes, 4 pole 50 hertz. So, you can calculate synchronous speed 120 f by p rpm. So, 120 into 50 hertz by 4 pole. So, ns will be 1500 rpm. Okay, synchronous speed is 1500 just a substitute here. Okay. Now, if I use calculator, I will get the answer. So, 60 divided by 2 pi into 1500. Yes, I am getting 441 Newton meter. That is the answer. Very simple question. But interesting thing is, guys, you see that this power, whatever I calculated here, this is the input power drawn by the motor. Okay, but whatever power I used here because this is the torque developed by the motor, we know that motor will draw electrical power as input, but it will develop mechanical power as output. So when I ask you what is the developed torque, I have to use mechanical power developed by the motor. But why I am using electrical power drawn by the motor as a mechanical power developed by the motor because in the entire question, there was no information about power losses in the machine. No information. Resistance was not given, nothing was given. Therefore, I am assuming it is a lossless machine and then I can, uh, if it is a lossless machine, I can assume input power and output power are going to be same. That is how this solution is obtained. For suppose, if in the same question, let us say, uh, this motor has, let us say, around 2000 watts of power loss. So, if 2000 watts of power loss existed, then if input power is 69282, then 
this mechanical power would have been 69282 minus 2000 that has to be used then only you will get the developed torque of the motor understand okay but anyhow in the question as there is no information about power losses we are neglecting power loss here okay right fine so let's move to the third question uh, this is a multiple choice type question and this is for two marks okay important model all right so let us read the problem a six pole 50 hertz three phase salient pole rotor synchronous motor the question is uh, salient pole synchronous motor okay it has a reluctance power of 1.047 megawatt the first information is Reluctance power information was given. Reluctance power is 1.047 megawatt. If a terminal voltage is 1100 volt per phase with a load angle of 30 degrees, then what are the possible values of XD and XQ is the question. So we have to calculate XD and XQ values which will satisfy the given information 1.047 megawatt. Okay. So let's try to answer this question. Uh, Yes, first of all, what is the formula for active power developed by a salient pole rotor synchronous motor? Yes, in a salient pole rotor machine, two power components will be available. One is electromagnetic power component, another one is reluctance power component. So if I write the formula, it is 3 EF into VT divided by XD into sin delta. This is the first component and the second component is 3 Vt square by 2 into 1 by xq minus 1 by xd into sin 2 delta and the unit for this power is watt. Suppose if all quantities are expressed in per unit values, you need not to multiply the formula with 3, that 3 you can remove uh, but in actual values 3 phase power means 3 times of single phase power. So, multiplying with 3 is important and in this equation what is mean by reluctance power is yes, this component this is what we call it as reluctance power of the motor all right or not okay so reluctance power is independent of excitation voltage ef okay and this component we call it as electromagnetic power component electromagnetic power component okay but which power information was given in the problem? Yes, it was clearly mentioned reluctance power information was given 1.047 megawatt. So let me equate this reluctance power to 1.047 megawatt. Therefore, therefore, 3 Vt square by 2 into 1 by xq minus 1 by xd into sin 2 delta this power is reluctance power which is equal to 1.047 megawatt means can I write 10 power 6 watt okay already what is the load angle given yes load angle was clearly mentioned 30 degrees okay let us substitute it so what is the terminal voltage yes 1100 volt per phase remember in this equation I am already using 3 therefore this is a phase voltage okay in the question also directly phase voltage was given for us 1100 volt per phase okay so let's substitute 3 into 1100 square divided by 2 into 1 by xq minus 1 by xd into sin 2 delta 2 into delta is known as a load angle what is the load angle given in the problem 30 degrees 30 degrees this is equal to 1.047 into 10 power 6 okay so take everything to the right side then you will get this difference 1 by xq minus 1 by xd so 1 by xq minus 1 by xd you can calculate this value first let me use my calculator let me take all the products to the right side so 1.047 into 10 power 6 if I take this product to the right side into 2 divided by 3 into 1100 square and what is sin 2 into 30 sin 60 sin, sin 60 is 0.866 okay so divided by 0.866 so I am getting 0.6656 
So this is the value of 1 by x q minus 1 by x d. So once you know this difference, now you see already options are there. Let us substitute these options in this equation. Which our option satisfies this relation? That is the correct answer. Okay. So one thing is very sure, guys. In a salient pole machine, x d is always greater than x q. Okay. Uh, we are also asked to calculate x d and x q. X d is always greater than x q. Therefore, this option ruled out because it shows that x d less than x q. Uh, similarly, this option is also ruled out x d less than x q. Therefore, answer should be either B or D. Substitute both of them in the equation that we found, whichever satisfied the equation that is the correct answer. Suppose if I substitute option B, uh, 3 and 1. Let us substitute here. If I substitute 3 and 1, uh, I will do it here. 3 and 1 if I substitute, x d 3 x q 1. So 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3. What is this value? 1 minus 0.33. Is it 0 0.666? Yes, I think the op equation is satisfied. What if I substitute option D guys? 9 and 6, x D 9, x Q 6. If I substitute that, 1 by 6 minus 1 by 9, how much is this? Uh, 1 by 6 minus 1 by 9. So I am getting 0 0.055, which is not satisfying this relation. Therefore, the possible answer will be option B. Okay, this is the correct answer. Okay, if I substitute this x d and this as x q, then only uh, my relation is getting satisfied, which is 0.66. Uh, therefore, option B is the choice. Okay, that's it. So, very simple question. Reluctance power was given. First, you need to remember the formula for reluctance power. And what the common mistakes students do is that they forgot to multiply with 3. If you forgot to multiply with 3, you will get a single phase power only. For a 3 phase machine to get 3 phase power, we have to multiply the equation with 3. Okay, right. All right, let's move to the next question. Uh, this is multiple select question, guys. Multiple select question. That means more than one option may be correct. Okay, one more question. Read the problem. Which of the following is or are true when an alternator is synchronized with infinite bus bar? Okay. So it is very clearly mentioned an alternator synchronized with infinite bus bar. So when I use the word called synchronized, that shows that a new alternator, it is a new alternator just synchronized with infinite bus bar. So we all know that when a new alternator just synchronized with infinite bus bar, the alternator will be under floating condition initially, floating condition, okay. So floating condition. It will neither generate the power nor absorb the power. That is what we call it as floating condition. During this floating condition, what are the rules? Magnitude of induced EMF is same as terminal voltage, which is equal to 1 per unit. Load angle delta will be equal to 0. That means EF and VT both are in phase with each other. Armature current will be 0. Machine is neither generating the current nor absorbing the current. Active power will be equal to 0. Reactive power will be also equal to 0. This particular condition is what we call it as floating condition. Floating condition means an alternator is just synchronized with this infinite bus bar. When it is freshly synchronized with infinite bus bar, it won't generate the power straight away. Okay. Initially, it will be under floating condition. Machine is neither generating the power nor absorbing the power. Understand? Okay. So, uh, now if you look at option A, EF is equal to VT. Yes, that is correct. EF magnitude and VT magnitude both are equal. Load angle is equal to 0. Yes, that is also correct. At floating condition, delta is 0. Active power will be 0. Machine will not generate any power. And armature current is also 0. Yes, all the four options are true right now. So it is an MSQ question where A, B, C, D, all options are correct. Okay, simple question. Okay, so next we have a two marks question. This is a numerical answer type question, two marks. So read the problem. A four pole 1800 RPM three phase Y connected alternator has a field flux per pole of 15 milliweber. The armature has 96 slots overall, which are filled by a full pitched double layer winding having 
two turns per coil what is the line voltage at no load is the question okay so so much data was there uh, it's a database question based on the data you have to understand which formula to be used substitute the data in that formula you will get the answer okay easy so machine is a four pole machine rotating at 1800 rpm so when speed and poles were known you can calculate frequency immediately what is the formula for frequency p into n divided by 120 so it's a four pole 1800 rpm divided by 60 you will get 60 hertz right or not okay is it correct uh, one second just let me check four pole 1800 rpm by 120 sorry this is not 60 this is 120 right P n by 120, mm, correct, it is 60 hertz. If it is 1500 RPM, 50 hertz, okay. Now, machine is a star connected machine. It has a field flux per pole of 15 milli Weber. Okay, let me go to the next page and uh, note down the data. Yes, the field flux per pole is 15 milli Weber, okay. Next information, it has 96 slots overall. Number of slots are equal to 96. Okay, next information, which are filled by full pitched double layer winding. Okay, full pitched double layer winding. We know full pitch winding means pitch factor is equal to 1. And double layer winding, what is mean by double layer winding? Double layer winding means number of coils are equal to number of slots. If it is a single layer winding, number of coils are equal to slots divided by 2. Okay, but it is clearly mentioned double layer winding. So number of coils are equal to number of slots and as 96 slots are given, therefore number of coils are also equal to 96. And the next information, every coil has two turns, two turns for each coil. Okay, so each coil, two turns are available. This is the next information. Okay. And then what is the line voltage at no load? At no load means we are asked to find out induced EMF, that to line induced EMF. Uh, to calculate line induced EMF, first I have to calculate phase induced EMF. What is the formula for phase induced EMF? It is 4.44 into field flux per pole into frequency into number of turns per phase into winding factor. Okay. Winding factor is nothing but pitch factor multiplied by distribution factor. Already pitch factor is equal to 1. So I have to calculate distribution factor first. It is a 2 marks question guys. So you can spend around 4 to 5 minutes in the examination hall. Okay. Right. So let me calculate the distribution factor. What is the formula for distribution factor? Sin m gamma divided by 2 by m sin gamma by 2 where m is nothing but slots per pole per phase m slots per pole per phase and you can calculate that yes how many slots are available 96 four poles and it is three phases so it was 96 by 12 which is equal to 8 so m value is equal to 8 and then gamma gamma is known as a slot angle you can directly calculate slot angle using the formula 180 degrees divided by slots per pole. So 180 degrees divided by 96 slots per 4 poles. So uh, the answer would be 180 into 4 divided by 96, 7.5 degrees. Now substitute this m value and gamma value in this formula, we will directly get a distribution factor. So let me do it. So sin m gamma, you can write multiply m gamma. See, m gamma product is also known as a phase spread. For three phase machine, m gamma is 60 degrees always. You can directly substitute or else m gamma values are available, substitute there. By m sin gamma by 2, m is 8, gamma is 7.5 divided by 2. So if you do that, you will get distribution factor. Let me do it. So. Yes, I am getting 0 0.9556, 0 0.9556, 0 0.9556, 0 0.9556, 0 0.9556, 0 0.9556, 0 0.9556, 0 0.9556, 0 0.9556, 0 0.9556, 0 0.9556, 0 0
point nine double five six. That is the value of distribution factor. So the moment I know distribution factor, pitch factor is already equal to one. So product of the two, you will get winding factor. One product is known. Frequency was already calculated, sixty hertz. Flux per pole is already given in the problem, fifteen milliwebers. Now the only unknown here is number of turns per phase. To understand how many turns are there per phase, just look at this. Overall, ninety-six coils are there. Each coil has two turns. Okay. So total, how many turns are available? Let's calculate. So total turns are equal to total coils multiplied by turns per each coil. You can see coil coil will cancel. You'll get number of turns. So total ninety-six coils are there. Each coil has two turns. All right or not? Therefore, it is ninety-six into two, right? That means one hundred ninety-two. One hundred ninety-two, right? One hundred ninety-two uh, turns are there. Sorry, not coils. One hundred ninety-two turns are there. But I don't need the total number of turns, guys. I just need yes, number of turns per phase. Okay, therefore. Number of turns per phase is equal to overall 192 turns are there. Per phase means you have to use three phase, right? It's a three phase machine, so it will be 64 turns per each phase. Per each phase, 64 turns are there. Now substitute everything in the EMF formula. We will get phase EMF first. So therefore, EMF is equal to 4.44 into yes. What is the field flux per pole, guys? 15 milliwebers. 15 milliwebers means 10 power minus 3. Frequency 60 hertz. Number of turns per phase 64. Yes, winding factor. Winding factor is equal to pitch factor multiplied by distribution factor. Pitch factor is already one. Why? Because the full pitched coils are used. Distribution factor 0.9556. So overall winding factor is 0.9556. So if you do this, you will get phase voltage first. Okay, so let me complete it. So 4.44 into 15 uh, milliwebers, right? Uh, 60 hertz into 64 turns per phase, and distribution factor 0.9556. So I am getting 244.3 volt per phase. But answer required is phase voltage or line voltage? Line voltage. So, what is the formula for line voltage, guys? In a star connection, remember the given question is a uh, star connected machine. Why connected? Most of the machines are always star connected. In a star connection, line voltage will be root three times of phase voltage. So, it is root three into two hundred forty four point three. So, the line voltage will be. Four hundred twenty-three point three volt per line. This is the answer. It's a two marks question. If you are good at calculations, you can solve this problem within two to three minutes itself. But you can spend mostly five minutes uh, in final examination. Okay? Yes. All right. Now let me go to the next problem. This is uh, a one mark question, multiple choice type question. So look at the question. Observe the following diagram. The polarity of induced EMF in conductors A, B, C, and D is what? There are four options available. So you have to select cross and dot polarities indirectly. Okay. So I think I hope it is visible to you, everybody. Or else I will put some. So these are dot polarities. These are the cross polarities according to the options. Okay, now let's see how to answer the problem. If you look at the diagram carefully, A, B, C, D. These conductors are available on the state or part of the machine. Therefore, it's a stationary. Whereas you look at the rotating part, that is the rotor. Rotor has approximately six conductors: one, two, three; one dash, two dash, three dash. and you see the current direction was clearly given right in all the conductors based on the direction of current can you identify the direction of flux created by rotor part yes you can use right hand thumb rule according to right hand thumb rule these conductors are carrying the current into the plane cross polarity 
these three conductors are carrying the current out of the plane dot polarity so what my thumb is representing the direction of magnetic field created by the rotor so therefore magnetic field is in upward direction magnetic field is upward direction means can i say this surface will act like north pole and this surface will act like south pole therefore the rotor has two poles the top one is north pole the bottom one is south pole also if you extend this rotor magnetic field uh, you know line uh, can i say this is nothing but a direct axis of the machine yes we all know direct axis means it is the axis which is passing through the poles also what is the one perpendicular to this direct axis can i say this is going to be quadrature axis of the machine which is perpendicular to direct axis yes and we all know that according to faraday's law whatever conductors are available along the direct axis of the machine maximum emf will be induced whatever conductors available along the quadrature axis of the machine zero emf will be induced no emf quadrature axis is also known as magnetically neutral axis therefore no emf is induced therefore indirectly in conductor b and d emf is equal to zero conductor b and d emf is zero so see uh, b d emf zero means option a is wrong option b is wrong the answer should be either c or d in option a and b b d has some voltage which is a wrong answer b and d voltages are zero because they are along the quadrature axis therefore answer should be either c or d two options are already eliminated now how to understand the correct answer yes that is where you have to identify a polarity of induced emf how to identify the polarity of induced emf fleming's right hand rule in rotating machines polarity of induced emf can be identified using fleming's right hand rule according to fleming's right hand rule thumb will always indicate the direction of conductor movement with respect to flux point finger will give you the direction of magnetic field then the central finger of the right hand will represent the emf but here if you closely look at the diagram conductor a and c are moving or they are stationary they are stationary why because they are on the stator part of the machine as they are stationary conductors are not rotating if conductors are not rotating how to show the direction of conductor using thumb yes that is where you need to select relative speed or relative movement you see here uh, rotor was rotating in anti clockwise direction that means can i say the poles are rotating in anti clockwise direction if a poles are rotating in anti clockwise direction that is equivalent to conductors rotating in clockwise direction therefore relatively i can think a was moving to right side c was moving to left side that is a clockwise relative movement uh, you see how to understand relative movement practically according to you just to take a day to day life example suppose you are moving on a bike let us say you are moving on a bike in forward direction at some speed okay so from your bike point of view you are sitting on the bike if you look at the road and outside objects how they looks like the road trees everything looks like moving in the opposite direction of your vehicle yes or not okay so the fact is the trees road everything are stationary your bike is moving but relatively from the bike point of view the road trees are moving in backward direction opposite to your vehicle movement that is what we call it as relative movement so similarly here the fact is field is rotating in anti clockwise direction that is equivalent to conductors rotating in clockwise direction okay therefore i found the direction of conductor a movement it was moving to right side so my thumb was showing right side it is under which pole north pole we all know that north pole is emitting the flux see my point finger was showing the magnetic field direction now what my central finger was showing guys my central finger was showing out of the plane or into the plane out of the plane therefore conductor a is a dot polarity conductor a is a dot polarity therefore obviously conductor c will become cross polarity you can check that yes conductor was moving to this side it is under south pole taking the flux in this manner so my central finger was showing into the plane so the final answer is a is a dot polarity c is a cross polarity therefore c option c is the correct answer right or not a is a 
dot polarity c is a cross polarity okay that's it so simple question if you have good practice you can answer this question very easily okay so remember thumb will represent the direction of conductor movement but if the conductor was not moving we have to take relative movement of the conductor okay yes all right let's move to the next question this is a one mark question which is a multiple choice type an over excited synchronous motor will always it's a straight forward question a facts based question we know that over excited synchronous motor is also known as a synchronous condenser the purpose of a synchronous condenser is to generate reactive power so that power factor of the load circuits can be improved we know majority of loads in power system are lagging type so when you connect a synchronous condenser across that lagging type load definitely the overall power factor of the system will improve so synchronous condenser is nothing but over excited synchronous motor and it will generate reactive power just like capacitor so it is generate reactive power so a and b are wrong answers okay but what is the power factor it is a leading power factor because i told you synchronous condenser is like capacitor who is generating reactive power capacitor means leading power factor so this is wrong the correct answer is option c direct question okay all right now we have the next question this is also a numerical answer type question one mark read the problem a three phase four pole 50 hertz alternator has overall 600 slots if coils are short pitched by four slots coils are short pitched by four slots then what is the pitch factor what is the formula for pitch factor guys pitch factor is equal to cos alpha by 2 where alpha is short pitch angle where alpha is short pitch angle and here short pitch angle was not given directly but there is an information given what is the information coils are short pitched by four slots that means indirectly short pitch angle alpha is equal to four slots angle four slots angle because it was given coils are short pitched by four slots therefore alpha is a four slots angle what is the angle of each slot gamma therefore short pitch angle is four gamma what is the formula for gamma guys gamma is equal to 180 degrees divided by slots per pole if i substitute 4 into 180 degrees divided by how many slots are there in the machine 600 slots and 4 poles are there so 600 slots by 4 poles so if i use calculator if that 4 also goes to the numerator it will become 16 so 16 into 180 divided by 600 i am getting 4.8 degrees electrical obviously okay so this is alpha value okay so once i know alpha what is short pitch angle cos alpha by 2 therefore it will become cos 4.8 divided by 2 okay so that means it is 2.4 cos 2.4 is 0 0.999 so kp 0.999 almost 1 this is the pitch factor but we are asked to answer up to two decimal places therefore 0 0.99 is the correct answer easy question so remember always a short pitch angle will not be given in degrees sometimes they will be it will be given in number of slots okay right fine now the ninth question it's a numerical answer type question and it's a two marks problem so five minutes is the target time okay read the problem a three phase synchronous generator connected to infinite bus bar and delivering rated current at 0.8 leading power factor the synchronous reactance is 0.5 per unit and armature resistance is neglected the percentage rise in field excitation required to improve the power factor to unity so most important thing if you read the entire problem the data was given in per unit values and it was a generator first information okay connected to infinite bus bar that means a terminal voltage is equal to 1 per unit and delivering rated armature current rated armature current means 1 per unit at 0.8 leading power factor 
0.8 leading power factor that is this is case number one or you can say initial data now what you need to do what is the percentage rise in field excitation that means we have to increase the excitation such that power factor is improved to unity that means here the question is it is a variable excitation type machine okay we are increasing excitation such that power factor is increased to unity that means the new power factor is a unity power factor so excitation is varying but there is no information about the steam input in the entire problem that means indirectly steam input is constant so here excitation is variable excitation is variable steam input is constant steam input constant means which power is constant active power is constant so first let me note down case number one details initial data yes initial data case number one yes machine is connected to infinite bus bar so terminal voltage is equal to one per unit delivering rated current in per unit values what is mean by rated current one per unit power factor cos phi is equal to 0.8 leading yes or not 0.8 leading synchronous reactance is 0.5 per unit armature resistance is neglected now using this data first calculate active power and also calculate excitation emf what is active power guys active power means can i directly write vi cos phi why I am not writing root 3 VL IL cos phi? Because it is per unit calculation. When in per unit calculation, no need to multiply with root 3. So V is 1 per unit, armature current 1 per unit, power factor 0.8. Therefore, active power is 0.8 per unit. Also calculate excitation EMF. What is the excitation EMF? Direct formula. Yes. What is the formula? In generator, EF is equal to square root of VT cos phi plus IARA whole square plus VT sin phi leading power factor so minus IAXS whole square if it is a lagging power factor the formula is plus IAXS whole square in a leading power factor minus IAXS whole square so let me substitute the data so square root of VT is 1 power factor is 0 0.8 yes or not RA is neglected guys therefore this is 0 plus Vt is 1, sin phi 0.6 minus armature current is 1 and what is the reactance? 0 0.5 whole square. So if I continue overall 0 0.8 square plus uh, 0 0.6 minus 0 0.5, 0 0.1 square. Complete this you will get the value of excitation EMF. Okay, let me solve it. So 0 0.8 square plus 0 0.1 square under square root so 0 0.806 per unit this is the excitation emf with this case one is completed okay case one is completed now i must move to case number two in case number two what was the modification happened excitation is increased excitation is increased such that power factor was changed to unity this time the power factor was the new power factor is unity but there is no change in steam input there is no information about steam input in the entire problem that indicates steam input is constant steam input constant means active power is constant what is the active power in the previous case 0.8 therefore in the new case also 0.8 so the new active power is also 0.8 what is the formula for active power v i cos phi is 0.8 uh, v is 1 per unit voltage will never change because it is bus bar voltage but armature current will change because the disturbance is created what is the disturbance excitation increases whenever excitation changes definitely armature current will change but what is the new power factor guys unity power factor is equal to 0.8 that shows that the new armature current is equal to 0.8 per unit Yes or not? Okay. Power factor is equal to 0.8 per unit. Sorry, armature current is 0.8 per unit. This is new armature current. Using this new armature current, calculate what is 
the new induced EMF. If you calculate the new induced EMF, you compare new induced EMF with the old induced EMF, you will easily understand the change in excitation. Okay. So, what is the formula for new induced EMF? Same formula. Vt cos phi plus Ia or a whole square. Vt sin phi plus Ia xs whole square. Okay. Now, substitute. What is the power factor, guys? Power factor unity. That means cos phi is equal to 1, but sin phi is equal to 0. Already, armature resistance is neglected. Ia Ra is 0. Therefore, if I substitute square root of Vt is 1 per unit, cos phi is 1 whole square, Vt sin phi is 0, Ia is 0.8, Xs is 0.5 whole square. So, if I use calculator, I will get what is the new excitation EMF? Let me check it. So, 1 plus 0 0.8 into 0 0.5 whole square under square root. I am getting 1.077 per unit. This is the new excitation EMF. Let me check again. 1 plus 0.4 square. Yes, 1.077. Now, I just wanted to know what is the change in excitation, guys. Percentage rise in excitation I need, okay. So, I just need to excitation change means excitation EMF change, right. So, compare new EMF with old EMF. What is the old EMF? 0 0.806, new EMF 1.077. So, compare. So, what is the ratio from new EMF to old EMF? New EMF 1.077, old EMF 0 0.806. So, the ratio will be uh, 1.336. Okay. A uh, percentage wise, I can say the new EMF is 133.6% of old EMF. So, 133.6% means can I say? Excitation increases by 33 percent. Therefore, the field excitation increases by increases by 33.6 percent. That is the answer. Okay. It's a numerical answer type. The answer is 33.6. 33.6. Okay. Fine. So this is uh, an important model. You have to understand. Excitation was variable, but there is no change in steam input. Okay. Fine. Now, let's move to the next question. Question number 10. This is multiple select question, guys. That means one or more than one option may be correct. Okay. So, read the problem. A 3.3 kV 50 Hz Y connected synchronous generator is delivering 100 ampere to a bus bar at 0.6 lagging power factor. The synchronous impedance is 1 plus J 10 ohm per phase. Which of the following calculations is or are correct? If you look at all the options, the calculations are load angle that is delta, internal power factor angle that is psi. Out of the four, which calculations are correct is the question. Now, first point, it is a generator, synchronous generator. Delivering 100 ampere to a bus bar at 0.6 lagging power factor. Synchronous impedance is given. Okay. I need what is the load angle and what is the internal power factor angle. So, to find out load angle and internal power factor angle, I can use a tan psi formula. Okay. What is tan psi formula? Tan psi is equal to Vt sin phi plus or minus Ia xs divided by Vt cos phi plus Ia Ra. This is the formula in generator and here plus you will use for lagging power factor minus we will use for leading power factor. Plus not only lagging, unity power factor also. And given power factor is 0 0.6 lagging, so I will directly substitute Vt 1905.25 sin phi 0.8 because cos phi power factor 0 0.6 means sin phi 0 0.8 plus armature current is 100, xs is 10, 
it is given in the problem ra is 1 ohm xs is 10 ohm vt 1905.25 sin 5.6 sorry cos 5 uh, sorry cos 5.6 sin 5.8 cos 5.6 plus ia 100 into ra 1 so if i solve it at first i will get tan psi from that i can find out psi okay so uh, let me finish this off 1905.25 into 0.8 plus 100 into 10 that is 1000 divided by 1905.25 into 0.6 plus 100 into 1 that is 100. So, I am getting tan psi 2.0304. This is tan psi. Then what will be psi? Tan inverse of that value. So, 63.78 degrees. This is psi value. If this is psi value, uh, I think this is correct. This is wrong. 63.78 degrees internal power factor angle d is correct b is wrong i have to calculate one more value load angle delta how to calculate load angle delta guys for there for that purpose you have to draw a phasor diagram uh, how to draw a phasor diagram of generator you take terminal voltage as reference armature current is lagging the terminal voltage because the power factor is lagging power factor 0.6 lagging power factor and as it is a generator ef induced emf will always lead terminal voltage by an angle delta and then the angle between EF and IA that is internal power factor angle psi. Okay. So, from this load angle delta is equal to psi minus phi. Psi we already calculated 63.78 degrees minus phi is a power factor angle. What is the power factor? 0.6 lagging. Therefore, power factor angle will be cos inverse 0.6 okay so if i finish this 10.64 degrees is the load angle okay 10.64 means a is correct c is wrong therefore finally the correct answers are option a and option d it's a two marks question guys very simple question just one formula will directly give you psi value this is tan psi formula so you can find out internal power factor angle psi and then to find out delta you have to draw the phasor diagram and this is the phasor diagram for a lagging power factor load okay yes easy in a generator ef will always lead vt clear okay now see that we have a next question this is multiple choice type question and it is two marks so 5 minutes is the target time. A 3 phase synchronous condenser, question is 3 phase synchronous condenser connected to infinite bus bar and drawing an armature current of 0.6 per unit. The back EMF of this motor is 1.36 per unit. Neglecting armature resistance, this is important. Calculate the value of synchronous reactor. So, let me note down the data that was given. Machine connected to infinite bus bar, so Vt1 per unit. Back EMF of this motor is 1.36 per unit. Back EMF is nothing but EF. Okay. Armature current is 0 0.6 per unit. What is a synchronous reactance is the question. Most interesting thing is it is a synchronous condenser. What is mean by synchronous condenser? an overexcited synchronous motor which will operate at no load yes or not synchronous condenser means over excited synchronous motor at no load okay at no load and it will operate at zero power factor leading why it will operate at zero power factor leading Yes, overexcited motor means leading, that is correct. How do you know zero power factor? Because power factor formula is active power P divided by root over P square plus Q square. But machine was connected to any load or no load? No load. No load means active power will be zero. Therefore, it is zero divided by root over zero square plus Q square. Therefore, power factor will be zero. Definitely zero power factor, but leading or lagging? Leading because it is overexcited. 
Therefore, the additional hidden information in the problem is power factor is zero power factor. Now, what is the synchronous reactance we have to calculate? Uh, you can use any formula. You can use KVL equation or direct EF formula you can use. Okay. What is EF formula we know? Yes. In a synchronous motor, EF square, actually EF is equal to square root of formula will come. I am squaring on both sides. It is directly Vt cos phi minus Ia Ra whole square, Vt sin phi plus Ia xs whole square. Plus I am using because it is leading power factor. So, how much leading guys? Zero power factor. Zero power factor means cos phi zero or sin phi zero. Cos phi zero. So, sin phi is equal to one. Ra is neglected in the problem. This is already zero. So, substitute. Ef square is equal to. This entire first product is zero. Only second product will remain. Vt is one per unit. Sin phi is equal to one. Plus armature current. How much guys? Armature current 0.6. 0.6 xs is unknown value don't forget whole square so square and square will cancel uh, ef is how much guys 1.36 substitute so 1.36 is equal to 1 plus 0.6 xs 0.6 xs is equal to 0.36 xs is equal to a uh, point 36 divided by 0.6 3.6 by 6 uh, which is equal to 0.6 so the answer is xs is equal to 0.6 per unit so important thing is you must know what is mean by synchronous condenser first synchronous condenser is nothing but an over excited synchronous motor under no load condition when I said no load, active power will be zero. Actually, there will be small active power known as losses. But in the question, armature resistance is neglected. That means losses are also neglected. So active power is zero. Therefore, power factor is ZPF leading. Okay, right. Okay. So next question, we have a simple question. I don't solve this question exclusively for those students who are preparing on their own. I'll just give you inputs and you try to practice after that. Now see that uh, it is a numerical answer type two marks question. A single phase. So no need to worry about root 3, 3, etc. like that. A single phase 400 volt 50 hertz synchronous motor driving a shaft load of 120 kilowatt. Shaft load means output power. Mechanical load, right? So, the output power is 120 kilowatt and the total loss in the machine is 5 kilowatt. Total loss is equal to 5 kilowatt. Operating power factor, unity power factor, cos phi is equal to 1. Okay. Synchronous impedance is 0.1 plus J1 ohm. Resistance is given, reactance also given. What is the excitation EMF? EF is the question you need to calculate. So what you do here is that you have to solve on your own. I'll give you just inputs. Output power was known, loss was known. Can I calculate input power? Yes. What is input power? Output power plus losses. Input power for a motor, input power means electrical power definitely. Yes. What is the formula for electrical power? Root 3 VL IL cos phi. I think I need not to use root 3 because the machine is single phase. Simply VI cos phi. So, if Vi cos phi was known, from that you try to calculate I, that is nothing but armature current. Once you know armature current, everything is easy because EF we have a direct formula. Square root of Vt cos phi minus Ia Ra whole square plus Vt sin phi plus R minus Ia excess whole square. Using that formula, you can calculate EF. Okay. So, solve this problem. I will provide the answer in the description. So, just check your answers. Okay. Right. That's all. This is the last question, guys. Uh, so please practice that last question. I will provide the answer in the description. Check your answers. Okay. So why I discussed this session here? See, it's very important for every student to attempt one class test at least. Okay. Uh, once your preparation is completed. So if you are self-preparing on your own, you purchase any one online test series available in the market. Okay. There are many online test series available. Even Ohm Institute will also offer one online test series. If you are interested, you can call to Ohm Institute, uh, you know, management team and you can purchase online test series. 
or you purchase any one online test series okay no need to write number of tests it's one good test is enough okay so once your subject preparation is completed you have to practice all previous gate examination questions at least to two times and then attempt one exam so that you can check how far you have been prepared what are the areas you are losing the marks what are the areas you are able to answer well okay and keep revising after attempting the test don't leave that subject at regular intervals of time you have to uh, you know revise the subject so that you can remember the formulas for long time okay that's all thanks for watching